Joyce Troop here at Bike Man Performance. Today we're doing a technical video on how to brake in your engine. Hope you guys all like my fancy riding. It took me way too long to do that. So now we're just gonna erase it though. And make some space. So first things first, when you get a new engine, uh, you assemble it. Uh, you're gonna wanna uh, lubricate everything very well uh, with two stroke oil if it's two stroke oil two-stroke engine, uh, four-stroke oil if it's a four-stroke engine. And uh, once you get everything assembled, uh, your first fire up is very, very important. It's the most important fire up of the entire engine. And it's very, really important that you follow certain steps when you do that. So on a four-stroke, you want to make sure that you prime uh, your oil system before you even try to fire it. Uh, two-stroke doesn't really matter. Uh, but on a two-stroke in your first gas tank, you're going to want to mix a little bit of extra oil into your fuel. Uh, we always say mix about 80 to 1 uh, oil to fuel mixture in your sled if it's an uh, oil-injected sled. Uh, if it's a not uh, oil-injected sled, so it's already pre-mixed, uh, you're going to want to go up uh, from your regular mixture. So if you're 40 to 1, uh, mix it 32 to 1. If you're 32 to 1, nah, go down to like 26 to 1. 50 to 1, go down to 40 to 1. Uh, it's just so it's got a little bit of extra oil for that first startup. But let's look at what your cylinder really looks like underneath the microscope. So everybody thinks your cylinder has flat walls in it. Now, in a perfect world, they would have perfectly flat walls, your rings would be perfectly flat, and they'd have a perfect ceiling surface. Uh, but that's not the case. So let's show you what a real uh, cylinder wall looks like when you uh, zoom way in on it. That's what it looks like. So now imagine a ring trying to slide across this and a piston trying to slide across that. Uh, that's a very rough surface. So if you load your motor, before it's broke in, everything is running against this cheese grater. That's a bad thing, we don't want that. So what we do is fire up a sled UTV and we'll let it idle, no load. Uh, and what'll happen is the piston and rings will go up and down, wearing this away. So after a little bit of wear, now we have a surface like this. Is that good enough to, to load yet? No, that's not good enough to load yet. We're still gonna have a lot of extra friction and heat caused by that friction and extra wear uh, shaving metal off where it's not supposed to be shaved off of. So we wanna run that through an entire break-in sequence until we have, it's called a fully seated motor and a fully seated motor will have nice flat areas with little grooves. These little grooves, the crosshatch that's in there, they hold the oil. So look, your, your oil sits right in here. Your ring goes by, scrapes it off, and a little bit of oil gets back on that ring and keeps everything sliding nice. Now let's talk about how to get this break in done right. So the first time you fire it up, Fire it up, let it sit in idle, uh, don't go over 2000 RPM, watch your coolant, make sure it's cycling coolant. Uh, let that thing come up to where the thermostat opens and then get up, get up above where that thermostat opens by about 30 degrees. So first time, go to where your T-stat opens, every motor is different. Uh, so you can do some research online and figure out what temperature your T-stat opens but uh, plus 30 degrees. And what that'll do is that everything will heat up, everything will be moving nicely, and it won't have a lot of uh, load on the, the surface of everything. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing like four times. So you heat it up till the thermostat opens, 
Let it cool down naturally to whatever room temperature is. Let it heat up again. You can take your engine through this process as many times as you want. It won't hurt a thing. It'll only make it happier. Uh, but we recommend at least four times. Now, uh, the next uh, really important phase of the break-in. Uh, we have the first run. Now, during this time, you want to spend about two hours, no more than quarter to half throttle. And 1,000 RPM below your minimum or under your maximum. So, and the big reason for that is at your peak horsepower, your peak, peak RPM, uh, you also have the peak load on everything. So we're gonna stay quarter to half throttle well below that peak, peak load on the cylinder wall. Now, we won't, after you get uh, through that two hours, now you're still, starting to wear down but you're not you're not there yet so on the next two hours of operation you can hit brief segments of wide open but no more than a second so second run so last from uh, two to four hours No more than just brief blips with the throttle, like rap, or with the throttle to wide open, but no extended, no wide open for more than a second. Uh, and that's really important because you're putting heat into everything and you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you know, you're not creating excess wear, excess friction, because excess friction will start moving material and we don't wanna do that, we just wanna plane the material. So. If you have a four stroke and you complete this four hours, now it's time to change your oil. Put fresh oil in that thing because all them little particles that you shaved off here is in your oil. You want to get rid of that. You want to start fresh from there on out. After four hours, have a day, go hammer on that thing. On a snowmobile, after four hours, uh, now you can decrease your mixture in your tank up until eight hours. Uh, so you just add just a little bit. So like in a fuel injected, fuel and oil injected sled, uh, we say 100 to 1 in the gas, and that'll give you your extra that you need. But uh, this is a recipe for a, a great running engine, long life, and uh, make sure that every time you start up your sled or UTV, you let it get up to operating temperature where the thermostat's opening before you ever load it. That's even after an engine's broke in. You never want to load an engine before your heat exchangers or radiators hot because you still have cold water in the heat exchanger, you still have cold water in the radiator, and that engine's not fully expanded and it's not ready to load yet. So uh, that's a little bit about break-in and engine startup. Joey Strube over now. I'll see you next time. Check out all our parts at bikemanperformance.com.